Welcome to Pressure Crisp, everybody. Today on Pressure Crisp, we're going to be reviewing the sear and sizzle again. This is made by Grill Grate. We're going to be using the eight quart today. I did, the last review was on the 6.5, so I figured let's try the eight quart. We're also going to be doing some different foods. Well, they're the same foods, but they're gonna be frozen. People asked me to try a frozen chicken breast. We're gonna try a frozen burger. I'm also going to be doing French toast and pancakes just for fun on the griddle. This works perfectly in the 6.5 quart. I'm not gonna lie. This, that review was an honest review. It's a great item because uh, I do love my Ninja Foodi grill. Love it, love it, love it. But this is a great alternative for people that either don't, that are on a budget or they just don't have the room in their kitchen. And yes, this looks like a mad mess of trivets, dehydrator, silicone rack, the searing sizzle, but it's all gonna make sense to you. Now, you have to make sure that you have this enclosed greasy form. This happened when I was removing the searing sizzle on the last review that I did when I cooked the hamburger, the grease dripped all over this paper. It's really nice, it shows you how, like low position, how to use the, I call it the little propeller. They call it a diffuser from the basket. We're going to go over how you can adjust the height in your Ninja Foodi 8 quart. The, eight, the only difference between the 6.5 quart and the 8 quart Ninja Foodi is the depth. Not the width, it's the depth. Like I cooked, and I did put it on my Facebook group, the first couple times I was using the sear and sizzle, I wasn't happy with it. But once I figured out how to adjust the height, by using the dehydrator rack or different types of trivets that you can order like on Amazon if you want to. Or the eight quart actually came with this one. And this is a bit higher, but if you have the 6.5, and, and I'm gonna show you all these just so you can get like an understanding and just use what you have in your house, use what you have on hand. And then if you have to, just you can go out and purchase a few items that are needed. So let's go on over to the eight quart and I'm gonna show you what I do. So to get started, I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna cook the chicken breast first. And I think we're going to be, you know something, since not everybody has a dehydrator rack, maybe I won't use that. Let's go with, we're gonna use this, because this trivet comes with the eight quart ninja. That's still a bit high. Yeah, that's still too high for that chicken breast because it's frozen, frozen solid. I think what we're gonna go with, we're gonna go with the trivet that actually came with the eight quart Ninja Foodi. Now that's the furthest that you can get away from the heating element. Because like I said, this is a very, very large chicken breast. We're gonna leave that right in there. We're gonna go ahead and lower the lid. We're gonna go ahead and turn our Ninja Foodi on. We're gonna select Air Crisp. The temp is 390, so I'm gonna leave it on 390 to preheat the sear and sizzle. Go ahead and press start. It defaults to 20 minutes. You need to let the sear and sizzle preheat for at least 10 minutes. Now, like that old saying, hindsight is always 2020. Yeah. When I popped this chicken breast in the freezer the other day, I should have actually thrown in some marinade. I failed to do that, so it's going to be very, very difficult to season this chicken breast while it's frozen. I just weighed this chicken breast. This chicken breast is 14.1 ounces. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at the thickness on this chicken breast. You have, want to take into consideration the height that you're going to cook this food, and this is frozen solid. Now, I cooked the chicken breast, a regular fresh chicken breast, which was only seven, uh, maybe nine ounces, I'm going to say, the last time. This is a true test, and yeah, we're, we're definitely going to give this, definitely going to give this a whirl. The Ninja Foodi Grill can do it, so I don't see why the sear and sizzle cannot do it. So what I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray this chicken breast down with a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil, and I should have put this on a sheet pan just to catch the overflow, but... We'll do the best we can here. A little bit of oil. And I'm just using this Weber dry rub. It's the only thing I really have in the house and I don't have any more homemade rub. We're gonna flip it. Now we're gonna spray the backside of this. 
And we're just going to take that rub and sprinkle it right on. Whoops. A little bit heavy on the rub. Whoa. So this has been heating, preheating for 12 minutes at 390 degrees. I'm going to open the lid. Here's another tip. They say after the first few uses, you don't have to oil it. But in the case of chicken breast, I do like to oil the sear and sizzle. And I just take a pastry brush, try to get it into every nook and cranny. Now I'm going to take that chicken breast. Listen. That's a nice sizzle. We're going to lower the heat lid. And like I said, the temp is 390. We're going to lower this down to, let's try 350. We're going to set the time for 30 minutes. Now I'm going to come back here and check this chicken in probably like five or six minutes. So it's been seven minutes. I'm going to check on this guy. Yeah, he is still frozen solid. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the lid. Don't want all that heat to escape. I'm going to let it go probably for like 10 minutes. But I'm debating. I think I'm going to increase the temp. I'm going to bump the temp up to 375. So seven minutes in, I took the temperature from 350 to 375. I'm going to let this go probably anywhere between 6 to 10 or 8 to 10 minutes. And we'll come back and check it. This is, it's a 14.1 ounce chicken breast. It is large. If you cut this in half, I think it would work much better. But this is the ch chicken breast that I threw in the freezer, and this is what we have to work with. So we have 14 minutes left on the timer from 30 minutes, so it's halfway. It's sounding nice. I am going to go ahead and flip it. Oh yeah, we've got some nice grill marks on this chicken breast. I'm going to angle it just a bit, just like that. You can see it's still raw right there. I can see it. So what I'm going to do is lower the lid. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to lower this back down to 350. Because I, let me get my probe. I want to see, I want to see, um, probably still frozen. Yeah, it's still frozen in the middle a bit. So what I'm thinking, you're going to keep it at 350 the whole time you're going to cook this. So I think a frozen chicken breast is going to take a while because when I cook the fresh chicken breast, but this one is a large one. You have to take in consideration the weight of this chicken breast. Mm, and like I said before, you might want to consider cutting these in half, especially this 14.1 ouncer, because then each, each chicken breast would have been about seven ounces. So this is a very large breast to have to cook in the Ninja Foodie grill on the sear and sizzle. We have four minutes and 33 seconds left. I do want to make sure this is cooking through. All right, it's 85 degrees. What I'm going to do is flip it over and look at it. This looks really good. I'm just going to give it a turn and lower the lid. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to tack on some time because we have four minutes and 27 seconds left. Since this is going to take a while, because this chicken breast is quite large. So we're still at 350 degrees. I'm going to increase this to 20 minutes. So we have about six minutes left. I just wanted to check this chicken breast. Do an instant read thermometer, trying to get right in the center. This is 161. So we're going to consider this done. But now you can add barbecue sauce or anything that you want right now, which we might do. But look at this gorgeous chicken breast. Gorgeous. So why don't we put a little bit of barbecue sauce on this chicken breast and we're going to cook it for a few more minutes. I'm just going to use, I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's. That's what I have in the house. Hopefully it won't all run off. Beautiful. Lower the lid and we're going to cook this probably for like two or three more minutes. Now at this point, if you're just caramelizing, I'm going to increase the temp to 400 so that it cooks rather quickly. All right, so we're going to open that lid. Uh, like two minutes has passed. Look at this gorgeous chicken breast. I'm going to put it on a plate and we're going to let it cool probably for like two or three minutes. 
then we'll slice into that guy. What Grill Grate recommends is you want to leave the lid open and let this cool for about 10 minutes. We're actually going to use tongs and a silicone mitt and we're going to take this out and we're going to wash it. So I just washed the sear and sizzle. I do recommend soaking it for a few minutes before you clean it. You do have to scrub it just a bit to get the baked on or cooked on chicken drippings off. So if you soak it, it will be a bit easier. Um, it, it's not hard. I'm not saying that it's hard. I'm just saying that it does take a little elbow grease if you want to use it one right after another like I am. Let's get to this taste test on this chicken. Let me pick this up. It looks really good. Let's see. Let's see if it's moist as the fresh one. Because this is piping hot, but I do want to squeeze it. It's still juicy, but I don't think it's, it's as, whoop. Every time, I always get something on the floor. I think it's just part of my videos. It's moist, you can see it, but I think the first one that I made in the other video, I think a fresh chicken breast will actually come out a, more moist. This one's not bad, so if you do get home from work and you're starving, it is pretty moist. But let's do a taste test on this. Okay, I can honestly stand here, not sit here inside. I can honestly say that the chicken breast that is cooked fresh is much more moist. This one's a bit more dry, cooking it from frozen. It's good, but the other one was great. So if you can remember, take out a chicken breast in the morning or pick up some fresh chicken breast on your way home. If this is not... It's not horrible, but the fresh is definitely better. But look at that. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous chicken breast. So while I have you here, I did go ahead and clean that grill grate. And I'm having it preheat at 375 as I talk. And I want, once again, you want to preheat this sear and sizzle for at least 10 minutes. We're, next, we're going to put a frozen burger on the sear and sizzle. This has been preheating for 11 minutes. Oh, I need that burger, let me go to the freezer. You can see it here. Oh yeah, probably break the Ninja Foodie with this. Um, we're gonna raise the lid. I'm not going to grease it because this is 80-20 hamburger. And we got a nice sizzle, close the lid. And like I said, this is at 375. I'm gonna go ahead and check this burger in probably five minutes. It's been five minutes. Gonna pop the top a bit. It's cooking nicely. And it's sticking just a little bit. This is a frozen hamburger. Go ahead and lower the lid. It's getting nice grill marks on it. We're gonna come back in five, seven minutes and check it. So there is seven minutes left on the clock. This burger is looking really good. I am gonna do a quick temp on it. Now we are 90, whoop, keeps going down. 92 degrees. Let's go ahead and flip the burger. Beautiful. And we're going to cook it for a few more minutes. We have two minutes and 44 seconds left. Burger looks great. Another quick temp. All right, this is done. This hamburger is done. It's 132 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. Look at that beauty. Now, once again, like I said before, leave the lid open. Let this cool for 10 minutes. Shut your Ninja Foodi grill off. And I'm gonna let this burger sit for like a minute or two because it's starting to ooze where I poked it with the thermometer. And we're gonna show you the inside and the outside. It looks really crunchy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and cut into this burger. We're gonna cut it right down the middle. There we go. This looks really good. It's moist, as you can see. Let me pick it up so you can see that, and I'll squeeze it just a bit. Really moist. The outside is nice. It's crunchy on the outside. If, if you mind that, I would definitely lower the temperature. We had it at 375. 
This burger cooked, it was a frozen burger, 375 degrees for 17 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a taste, if I can cut off a decent piece here. And you know something, there's no seasoning on this. I should have added some salt after the fact, but that's fine. Go ahead and taste it. Mmm. The burger is really good. The frozen burger came out really, really good from frozen. I went ahead and cleaned the bowl because there's grease in there. Also the sear and sizzle. I have it in there preheating at 400 degrees. Once again, you want to preheat this for 10 minutes. We are moving on to some breakfast foods. First up, we're going to make French toast. So I went ahead and preheated this at 400. It's been preheating, oh golly, I think it's been preheating for almost 15 minutes. I am going to go ahead and lower the temperature down to 375. And this video is not about recipes. I just made a quick um, egg, cream, and a little bit of vanilla extract. It's just a simple French toast. And I'm using that brioche bread again. It's a little bit thicker than normal bread. And we're just going to make a quick French toast with this bread. I usually add more like cinnamon or something, but I didn't want the cinnamon to, I didn't want the cinnamon to influence the color. I just want to see how this does making French toast. So I am going to raise the lid and I'm going to put a little butter right onto the sear and sizzle. I want to cover the whole sear and sizzle with a little bit of butter. Looks good. All right, we're gonna take that French toast and we're just gonna place it right on there. And that's what we want to hear is a little, some sizzle. I'm gonna go ahead and say, see if two fit. Two pieces fit, we're gonna go ahead and lower the lid. All right, the temp is 375. And I did add a little bit of vanilla extract to that mixture and you can smell it in the kitchen. It smells wonderful. It's been cooking for three minutes. Raise the lid. If you guys could smell it in here, it smells so good. We're going to go see ahead and see if we can flip these French toast. All right, we're going to have to increase the heat a bit. Because I'm learning just like you guys. Lower the lid. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and increase the heat to 390. A total of six minutes has passed. Look at those French toast. Oh my. Wow, this looks amazing. Now I'm going to go ahead and just cook these for probably like one or two more minutes because this is a thicker slice of bread and I just want to make sure these are done. This makes perfect French toast. Oh my God. So a total of seven minutes has passed. Look at this French toast. This is beautiful. Look at that color. Just gorgeous. I'm going to plate this up and we're going to do a taste test. I'm gonna lower the lid to keep the Ninja Foodie going. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. This looks amazing. Yes, I'm grabbing a fork. I need a knife of some sort. We'll grab a butter knife, I guess. We're gonna try this plain first, and then we're gonna put on some delectable maple syrup. There's the center. Oh my God. Let's try a piece of this. Super hot. This is so good. So good. Look at that. And it did, because this is a softer bread, so it did kind of sink in the middle. My suggestion for French toast would be like a homemade white bread. You want something a bit heartier uh, and more structurally sound to hold up to the egg cream mixture. Since we're going for this, might as well pour some maple syrup on here. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to try this. Oh, my God. Look at that. This is so good. Over the top good with the maple syrup. Oh my God. Okay, yes, 
This is the first time I've had French toast in years. I will be making this again with the searing sizzle. Moving on to pancakes. So we've, we've increased the temperature to 400. We're gonna go ahead and open the lid. And we're just gonna put a little pat of butter on there. And we're trying to even this up as best we can. There we go. You want the searing sizzle as level as you can get it. I'm gonna give that a minute to cook. Not really a minute, but we're gonna let the butter melt. All right, open the lid. Whoa. We're gonna pour some of that pancake mix. This is just regular pancake mix. All right. Lower the lid. Once again, it's at 400. Let me set the time for 15. It's not gonna take that long, but I just, it's easier math for me to do. Two minutes has passed, let's raise the lid. Wow. Let's go ahead and flip this pancake. Oh, a little pale, a little pale. All right, let's go for like another minute or two and see what happens. Two more minutes has passed. Let's check this pancake out. All right, so we're not getting the brownies like we did on the grilled cheese, but that's A-OK. -okay. Okay, so this cooked for a total of around five minutes. So let's, um, yeah. Ah, oh, it's not done in the center. Yeah, it's not done in the center. Well, maybe we can X that out. Okay, so this one didn't cook in the center, so we know we have to cook, cook it longer than five minutes. Hmm, these are thick pancakes. Mmm. The outside tastes really good, but these are like super thick pancakes. And I probably would have went another minute or two because the inside didn't cook all the way. Um, not a lot of brown like we did on the French toast. I wouldn't say these are horrible. Well, I don't want to use the word horrible. I don't want to say these are bad. It's just, for my pancakes, I like to have the nice crispy edges. So I definitely do French toast in there. Not too keen on the pancake, but I did this for you guys. You guys make your own decision. So I just want to recap. Okay, let's just go. What I'm going to do is just go over the foods right now, and then I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I've learned using the sear and sizzle. Now with the pancakes. Oh, did you see my face? Sorry. <laughs> my face gives me away. In regard to the pancakes, I probably wouldn't do pancakes again in here, but maybe the batter was too thick, but it didn't have that brown. I love, like I used to eat the whole thing around my pancake and leave the center because I liked the crispy edges with the butter. It's spectacular. I don't think we can achieve that in the sear and sizzle. If you guys have any uh, ideas, please leave a comment in the comment section. Now the French toast, see my face? The French toast was spectacular. It was delicious. I would definitely make French toast again using the sear and sizzle griddle side. Super, but once again, the bread is very important. I only had brioche in the house. Brioche is wonderful, don't get me wrong, but the inside is soft. I recommend like a homemade white bread or go to the bakery and get like something similar to like a homemade white bread. Either you can slice it yourself, the thickness, or have them slice it just a little bit thick, thicker than like, for example, quote unquote, wonder bread. You want that structure to hold all that fluid. Fluid's not a good word. That eggy cream vanilla mixture. When I was cooking this French toast, this kitchen, Ooh, I could smell the vanilla. The vanilla and butter were just, they were just, it was delicious. The aroma was wonderful. So French toast, we started off at 375, but I think in the future I would do 390 because we did increase it to 390 after three minutes of cook time. Sorry, just keeping track of my notes. And the cook time was a total of seven minutes. So in the future, I'd probably do 390, probably anywhere between five and seven minutes because you're gonna get that nice brown on the outside, not too brown, unless you want it more brown, then increase the temperature to 400. But play around with these temps. 
we're all learning here and this is great this is a great great little accessory it's, it really is on to the frozen hamburger the frozen hamburger came out extremely well it was moist we cooked that at 375 degrees for 17 minutes that was a six ounce hamburger if you're using a smaller hamburger or a thinner hamburger it will take less time just i'm just using what i have in the house and this is what i've come up with once again if you've done this from frozen leave a comment in the comment section Oh, don't forget, if you made that terrific French toast, tell me all about it. It is delicious. Focus, Lisa. Chicken breasts. Now, that was a super-sized chicken breast that weighed in at 14.1 ounces. That thing was like that thick after it cooked. Now, I'm also contributing this to user error. I should attempt it a little bit sooner, maybe taking it out at like 156 or 158 because the carryover would have brought it up to 165. So maybe I overcooked it a bit, but one of my YouTube viewers wanted me to remember the taste and the moisture that was in that last chicken breast. And I do remember that the fresh chicken breast was, was super moist. It was just really soft it, not soft. It was just super moist. It was not dry. This one, it was dry. Er. Would I make it again from frozen? Maybe not that thick of a chicken breast. Once again, hindsight's 2020. I should have taken that 14.5 ounce chicken breast, cut it down, and had two seven ounce, yeah, two seven ounce chicken breast, which would cook in half the time. So let's get to the cook times on the chicken breast. The chicken breast was cooked at 350 degrees for 42 minutes. That's a long time for a chicken breast. So what I would do in the future is once again, cut those chicken breasts in half when you get those supersized ones. Now I'm guesstimating, I haven't done a seven ounce chicken breast, but I will in the future, but I'm gonna cut that cook time in half. So I'm thinking the seven ounce chicken breast would probably take anywhere from 20 to 22 minutes, but start temping at 18. Once again, you have to factor in that carryover. I failed to do that. So it's not the sear and sizzle's fault or the frozen chicken breast's fault, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not a perfect cook. I'm not a chef. I'm just a home cook who likes to eat. Um, and then tips and tricks. Tips and tricks, please be careful especially when you're making greasy foods like the bacon, the burgers, the chicken, most of that stuff was baked on there, the juices from the chicken. Excuse me. They said they recommend opening up the Ninja Foodie, leaving it open for at least 10 minutes. But even after that 10 minutes, because the Ninja Foodie holds that heat. I don't know if you noticed that, but even when you don't use the sear and sizzle, the Ninja Foodie will hold the heat. You want to be very careful because there's no lip or edge on the sear and sizzle that grease will come off. The first time I ever used it, I made a burger and thank God I didn't have it close to me. I took it out too soon because I was in a hurry as usual and it grease went right on the floor. Well, I drop everything on the floor as you can tell from all my videos. I leave that in there just for some entertainment factor, but this isn't funny. You do not want to have a grease burn. So either, especially with the griddle side, you could wipe it up with a paper towel, to take off that excess grease. Now the gr uh, grill side, you have to be careful because the grease gets into the, I don't want to say nooks and crannies because those are large nooks and crannies. But if you can take a pair of tongs with a paper towel and wipe that grease out before you take that out. Burns are no joke. It's, it's just not worth it. Be proactive, mop up that grease and get it out of there or at least hold it away from you. Do not hold it close or even under your feet. Hold it out and take it over to the sink or, you know, dispose of the grease in a proper way. Not down your sink because that'll clog your pipes and that opens up a no, whole nother can of worms. Okay, other tips and tricks. Oh, when it comes to the cook height, I could, adjust, I could have adjusted the height in there. I do have the dehydrator rack. If you don't have the dehydrator rack, use the trivet that came with it. 
The eight quart also comes with another trivet where you can raise it up if you use the diffuser from the Air Crisp basket. I like to call it the propeller, even though most propellers only have three. That one has four. Um, think about what you're cooking. And if, like, if it's a thin chicken breast, you want it closer to the heat source. If it's a thin hamburger or a thin pork chop, raise it up so it's closer to the heat source. If it's thicker, move it away a bit. Or you can also, instead of moving it, you can also adjust your temperatures. Nothing is set in stone. Do what's right for you and your piece of chicken, your hamburger, your steak, whatever. If you like a well done steak, it's gonna cook a heck of a lot longer than how I like my steaks. I like mine rare to medium rare. Well done, you're gonna have awesome caramelization if you have it close to the heat source. But like I said, we're all learning here. So leave comments in the comment section and tell me what you think of this product. Have you had success with it? Have you had failures? I don't like the word, have you had learning experiences? That's what I call them. People call them ninja foodie fails, they're not fails. They're just learning experience. So every time you make something, you're building upon it. It's like building blocks. You're building like a house, you're building that foundation. I know exactly how long things take to cook now. A year ago, year and a half ago, when this Ninja Foodie came out, I didn't know what I was doing. But now I think of nothing of just making anything, and well, not anything, like things I repeat and over and over and over again. I don't have to look at a recipe. I know the cook times. I just, I have everything down pat now. But when you're first learning, like we're learning here because this sear and sizzle just came out. So tell me what any tips or tricks, what you've learned using the sear and sizzle. This product overall is a thumbs up. It truly is. And I am gonna say that I'm going to leave a link in the description because I'm going to be an affiliate for this company. One of my YouTube viewers who also has a YouTube channel and I can't remember his name right now. I'm gonna have to, you know something? Look for some lettering, you're gonna see his name. He sent this to Grill Grate. I didn't know that you could do something like that, nor did I know that I just didn't think of doing it. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I support and give this product a thumbs up. I truly like it. Truly, if, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, be affiliated with, with it first off. And the first video I did on the 6.5, I gave an honest review. I gave an honest review here. I could have said those pancakes were spectacular. They were not spectacular. I won't be making them again, unless I can come up with something, some different way to do it. Or if one of you guys, the viewers, has come up with a way to make pancakes, leave it in the comment section. I know I was long-winded at the end, but this is new, and I wanna tell you all the information that I've gathered and give it to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button as well as notifications. Join us on the Facebook group, Instagram, Twitter. We're all here to have fun and learn. I appreciate all my viewers and thank you so much.